Hello! Welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. We have just uh, caught some live bait. We've got some sand eels in the bucket. So now we are going to head that away for some pollock, maybe some bass. Rass as well, did you say? We'll do, do a few drifts with a live bait on a float. But we just found an pollock. amazing patch of sand eels. It's a glorious day. We've seen one dolphin so far. So, let's go see what we can find. We're just literally letting the live bait out by the side of the boat and the float's gone straight under. Bass. Well done. It's nice. Can I lift it up? Yeah, we have to lift the fish up. Yeah, just be careful. Yeah, look. See the hook hold? Cracking spike egg. Get it in the net. But yeah, this was the rig. We literally were just just paying it out along the side of the boat. It was my standard live bait rig. We have 140 gram float, a locked in lead of about two ounces with three to four feet, 20 pound floor row, ending in a six or chino with a live sand eel on. It was a live sand eel. Yeah, well, literally, I just painted it out, just counted out how deep I was going to let it run. Just let the bail arm off. By the time I turned around, it was gone. get a photo wheel with it and then we will let it go right that all happened a bit quick we didn't didn't quite get a chance to show you just a live launch on a sliding float and all we're doing is I was paying it out like that and it just kept on going and just went into the water didn't even have a chance to turn the camera on and we are drifting that way over a reef. At the same time, I will be fishing some sidewinder lures. And then we will get a, uh, we'll get a rass rod out. We'll get a rass rod out and uh, the little man might catch some bass. Yeah, the target for now is going to be pollock and bass on live baits and lures. And then when the tide eases off a little bit, we'll go inside somewhere where it's a find somewhere shallow and rocky and we'll try and catch some grass. Trying to get the float away from the boat. I mean the last drift shows you that you don't necessarily need to. But I like them at a better distance away from the boat. It's a lovely fine day. It's all about picking what's going on with the tide. At the moment we've got a good tide run up over a reef. Now predatory fish like bass and pollock, they like a little bit of tide. They like a little bit of movement. So when it's running like this, it's a good time for fish for predatory fish. As soon as it eases off a little bit and we can get inside where it's hard, where it's kelpie, we'll catch some wrasse. I hope you can see the float there in the background. It is a big float. There's two types of bites you can get on a float. You can either get a positive bite where the float goes right under the water. Or you get like a lift bite, which is where the fish picks the bait and the weight up, comes up in the water. The float will lie down flat. 
That was weird, that. I wouldn't be surprised if that sandhill has gone. No, but he's got a hell of a bite in his tail. <laughs> Yeah, that was a fantastic bite with the float. The float went down, bobbed up and then disappeared underwater. I can only imagine it must have been a little fish. Oh, there's a fish. Sandale. I'm going to try one more drift over this patch of reef and I'm going to try somewhere further in shore. We saw the float go. Oh, it's going under the boat. <laughs> A nice pollock. There's the live bait, there's the hook, there's the pollock. Now, a few people have asked me about whether or not I can show proper ways to handle fish, proper ways to hold them. You'll see me chin out a lot of fish like this. What you need to do is you sl slide your fingers right up the inside of the gill covers, like right up the inside of it. That way they don't come in contact with any of the gill membranes, because the gill membranes are very, very fragile. If you can see where my fingers are there, they're not going between the gills. Also, you'll see me return fish in a different way. A bass, when they tire themselves out, need recovering, they need holding in the water. Pollock, because they're strong, this one here, I can feel it tensing. If you kind of like torpedo them in head first like this. There look, he was down like a bullet. It gives them a burst of oxygenated water over the gills and kickstarts them on to swimming. So they go back. Right, we've come inside. You can see it's a lot calmer. It's a lot shallower. And uh, little man, we've got, oh, what are we gonna catch? A cuckoo wrasse. A cuckoo wrasse, told you. What colour is it going to be? Blue. A blue one. It's two types, male and female. If we catch them both, we will show you the difference. But we've got your fishing rod, haven't we? And all it is, is if you want to just jump down for a second, you just stay there. James's rod, when I can untangle it, is an ugly stick kayak rod just fitted with a spinning reel it's perfect for him because it's only short he's only short and i've made up some very simple twisted boom blood loops with the chino hook on and we're just going to be fishing ragworm in amongst the kelp are we going to do you want to put the worm on no okay do you want me to do it you hold on to your fishing rod then oh we do Literally, you take the ragworm and you just pass it up the hook. A 
I like to pull the head up past the eye because it locks the worm off so it won't drop off and then all we're going to do where are we we might still be on the rock so stand up then get ready keep feeling for him oh quick mind up you've got one keep going oh oh that is a strong one. <laughs> Come on, keep He's winding. Oh, keep going, keep going. Stop growling. Come on, get him wounded in. Wind. Oh. 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 Yeah. Wind up, wind. Keep winding up. Keep winding up. Oh, it's a strong one. Oh, here he comes, I can see him. Wow, he is a big one. Oh, look. Can you see him? Yes. Wow. Anna. What's your call? Oh, my goodness, James. <laughs> That'll do. No more winding now. What? It's a word. Oh, what's he doing? <laughs> He's ready to bleed all wet. That was a, so good, that was a big ball and Use that weight out your pocket. Yeah. Turn the hook on it. Shame. It's a big balance. Don't think you did get it up, didn't you? The ducks are down in the sea. And I'm feeling them. I'm feeling the ducks. I'm feeling the ducks. The, the ducks? The ducks. Oh, quick. Oh, oh there we got it. Come on. Wind in. Oh, quick winding it. Oh. 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 Oh, down as well. Anna. Oh. Oh, back up again. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I've got fish on that float rod. Wind, just keep winding as fast as you can. Right, and now lift it up in here. There we go. Oh, oh, another big ballon, Ras. Oh, it's getting you all wet. It is getting you all wet. Come here. Oh, jump down. Right now, keep an eye on what your mum's got because she's got a big fish there. There's another big ballon, Ras. Actually, the one that he's just lost that came off was twice this size. It's okay, it's okay. Get closer. A cracking spike, hey. Now that, that actually gave a drop back bite. If you look at all of these, every single one of these and at the back of there is a spike. So you've got to be really careful with them. I'm drop it back in this. Again, like with the pollock, if you slide your fingers right up inside of the gill plate, it stays away from the gill membranes. So it stays away from the red bits. This is actually hooked quite deep. Sometimes what you need to do with these is if you can go in through the gill, you can turn the hook. And push it out like that. There you go. Lift it out. Let it recover in the net for a couple of minutes and then we'll let it go. Like I was saying before, <laughs> some fish need holding. They need holding in the water until they're ready. Pollock, you can just dive back saw there with that bass I just held it in the water and then when it was ready to go it went 
<laughs> What's your mum got? Oh, ballin' Russ. Come on. Well done. Is she going to be able to unhook it yourself? Oh, oh, wait. Oh, you've got it. <laughs> go, James, go! Wait a second. No, it's come off. Right, let's wind up. Put some new bait on. I'm you what it is. Right, let's come down. Win that one either, James. Stay there. Just get some new bear bolt. Do you want to put the worm on or do you want me to? You too. We'll hold the rod then. I think we're ready. I think this is going to be a good one. Get ready. Come on, up, up on your chair. Come on, up, up, up on your chair. I can feel one nibbling. James, get hold your rod quick. up on some seaweeds. Get ready. Is it, is it wagging? Can you feel anything? My mum is trying to beat you. My mum is trying to beat you. You're a bigger one. You can't get upset just because your mum catches a bigger one. Pollock, oh nice one. Only a baby one. We've fished a bit of the tide. Um, we had the float out with a live bait and we had some nice bass and pollock. Fished ragworm for wrasse, which I think John may have now. Um, but it's getting a little bit warm out here for James now, so we're gonna wrap up once John's brought this in and head back in. Oh. What is it? Pollock. Oh, it was a pollock. Not a there we go. It's a very flappy pollock. There you go. So we hope you enjoyed a couple of family hours out with us. And uh, see you next time.